Hey folks, it's Nate Picos of Blambot, and I apologize for not doing a video in quite some time, but I've been super busy. Anyway, today I thought we'd talk about radio balloons. Um, if you've watched my video on thought balloons, you're going to see a lot of similarities here, because they basically all start out the same. So let me open Illustrator, and I've just got one of my default uh, lettering templates here. And I'm going to show you how to do these three balloons. This is sort of the standard, all-purpose Marvel and DC, very uniform. You know, the points are all the same size, they're all the same distance apart. And then we, I used those for a while, and then I, I started playing around and I made these, which are less uniform, a little bit more organic, and I kind of like them a little bit better. And over here, we have these, which are just a regular balloon with these points tacked on. And I'll show you uh, how to do balloon tails as well, these lightning bolt uh, radio balloon tails. There's really no magic to it, it's just practice and the pen tool. But let me um, zoom out here. Now in my template you can see I've got the more uniform, a bunch of the more uniform radio balloons and I really don't use them anymore as I've made these, which are the more organic looking ones. Um, and I've made some lightning bolt tails so I don't have to draw them every single time. I just I saved ones that I thought I, that looked pretty cool and I thought would be useful to have around. So let me go up here. Now all these start basically with a regular old balloon. So I'm going to grab one from up here, drag it down, and you'll notice that you know your balloons have these four points on each end and you're just going to add more points. So let me zoom way in here and switch to the pen tool, which is P on your keyboard. And I apologize if I'm awkward with, with speaking while I'm doing this, because you get to understand that I, you know, obviously I don't call out everything I'm doing when I'm lettering and I'm going really fast. And I use keyboard shortcuts for everything and action keys, so I'm not used to really thinking about what I'm doing. I just kind of do it. So let's go to the pen tool. And you want to make more points along the circumference of the stroke that are is you know is is equal in distance as you can get them but um you could play with it and obviously I'm just going to kind of speed through here so they're not going to be perfect but just so you get the idea oh, I know that one's not going to be great so I'll put that one there this one here this here Okay, so we got a bunch of points now, right? So what you can do is effect, distort and transform, pucker and bloat. And this is where the similarity with the thought balloons comes in. Um, you want to click preview over here. Now, if we slide this slider towards bloat, it's going to start looking more like a thought balloon. We go the other way, and it looks like a radio balloon. Uh, you don't need much of this effect. So right now this is minus 13%. I would go probably less than this, like minus eight. That's pretty good. So that's how you do these. And you know, I would I would fiddle with these points and make them a little more uniform. Like this one down here is a little too far apart than from the, these two. But you get the idea. That's how you arrive at this design. And when you have all the time you've got, you know, when you're not making a video, you can play with them forever. So let me copy this over here and show you the organic one. It's the first thing I want to do basically is right now this is my standard oval balloon still, but with the effect happening. You can see if I zoom in, you can see sort of the highlighted, you can see the balloon back there. What I want to do is make this into an object so I can uh, I can manipulate it. So what I'm going to do is take the stroke off first, because if you expand this with the stroke on, it's going to make the stroke another object. So I take the stroke off, go Object, Expand Appearance, and now it's just an object with a bunch of points. So let's put the stroke back on, and I'll just use the eyedropper tool, which is I on your keyboard, and sample my stroke up here. Hey, come on, computer, catch up. All right, so, uh, and, and if I haven't mentioned it before, the stroke I use, assuming that I'm not using any crazy effects or anything on a balloon or any calligraphic strokes that I've developed, 
um, is just 0.75 in, in thickness. I don't know what other letters use, but that seems to, to basically do the trick for me and look good against most artwork. Okay, so now we've got this object, and you just want to start playing with the points. You can make them you know, a little bit bigger, grab a couple here and do this. Um, you know, you can, it's just making them less perfect, I guess. And you can play and play and play until you got what you want. Maybe this one will come out. And if you don't like the angle of some of these curves, you can use the, um, I don't know, what do, you, what do you call these things, control points or whatever, to sort of, you know, manipulate these corners. And you keep going until you got something nice that you like that's not quite perfect. But you get the idea, right? You can see how I arrived at the uh, at this one here. Now these, um, this is how I do this. You've probably seen them slightly different in comics. Um, there's a version where this this curve here, you know, goes deeper into the balloon. But for that, it's a little more work. Um, and if you've got a ton of these things, you know, time is money when you're lettering. So I came up with this sort of workaround, which if, uh, I'm trying to decide on the best way to explain this. If these cut into the balloon, you've got to kind of make it all one object. You've got to deal with trimming that curve out. Um, I don't want to do that. I got, I got, you know, I've got to get things done. So I can do this and make it nearly as good. So just grab a regular balloon, and these are just these points, and even it's the same way you would attach a tail to a balloon. It's just um, compound path, really. You're taking these four objects, these pointy things, and making a compound path with the balloon. So I'm going to show you those. I've got a bunch of them that I've made over the years these things. And most of these are for radio balloons of different sizes and shapes. These weird, these over here are actually work pretty cool for uh, telepathic balloons. They look like little little breathy bursts coming out of a balloon. That um, And these up here are squinks. And squinks are the little bursts on the end of balloon tails. You ever see in a comic where the tail goes down to a window or a door like somebody's speaking behind a wall and the tail ends in a little burst, that's what they're called. They're called squinks, and that's what these are. So let me grab these. I'm going to copy them, control C, or command C, or whatever. I don't, uh, my, my left hand is just all over the keyboard, and I don't even think about it anymore. So it's, it's you're copying them. I'm going to drag, go down here, paste them, and you just put them where you need them. You, know, you can put them on the ends. Just like that, slightly overlapping. And just like you would do with a tail, you just make a compound path, and you see? And if you ever needed to edit, it, this is how you, um, how you would, you know, you just undo your compound path and play with them and put them back where you need them. If you needed to stretch the balloon, oops, you can just grab them and move them. and then make compound path again. Um, making a tail. Like I said, there's no voodoo involved with making balloon tails that are, are lightning bolts. You switch to your pen tool and you just keep practicing at this until you get it uh, you know, down to a science and you don't even have to think about it anymore. So I'm just making points and curves And of course, when you're done, if you don't like it, you can tweak it, but that's pretty good. See, you just end up with a tail like that. And then you grab everything and compound path. Now, this stuff with compound path and how I attach tails to balloons, um, as an aside, I use the, the stroke method of lettering as opposed to the layer method. And just to be super extra confusing, both methods actually use layers 
Just one of them is called the layer method. One's called the stroke method. Uh, use whatever you think works best for you and is the fastest. And if you want to know the difference, I have an article, uh, a little infographic that I've made in the Better Letterer section of the articles um, link in blambot.com. That'll show you the difference. And that's it. That's how you make a bunch of radio balloons. Um, thanks for watching. It's almost the holidays, so happy holidays, Merry Christmas, or whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.